Okay, so let's take a look at question number seven here. This is a unit seven. Um, unit seven, this is the lesson two, question number seven. It says here we have a set of data where we have the mean for scores for a set of classes and along with their standard deviation. And it tells us that within um, three standard deviations from the mean, um, all of these values are contained within it. Okay, so first of all, we should understand what that means. So if we just try to sketch ourselves a, um, a normal distribution curve here, okay, where the center of the, of the curve um, is the mean, three standard deviations, um, it's not quite symmetrical here, but good enough for this, three standard deviations is essentially going to encompass the entire population of all data points in the curve. So this means that this is virtually 100%. Okay, it's not quite 100%, but it's, it's so close that every value within three standard deviations is going to be captured for that particular class for each one of those, those ranges. So the first question it says, in which class is the student who received the highest mark on the test? So how do we know who would have the highest mark on the test? Okay, we know that each that the standard deviation, if we went three standard deviations, we would capture all the data. Okay, so the way we need to look at this is we take a look at class A, and we know that the mean score in this class is 78. Now the highest mark is the one that is um, to, the, to the right of the curve here. Okay, so it's the mean is in the middle, so anything above the middle is we're increasing in value, and anything below the, the mean we're decreasing in value. So that means we would just have to add three times the standard deviation to that value. So this would be 78 plus three times five, which would give us 93. Okay, that means we are virtually 100% sure that the highest mark in this class is going to be a 93 because three standard deviations captures that values up to 93. Okay, then we do the same for class B. We're gonna take 75 and multiply it by three times seven, okay? And then we're going to get 96. So the highest possible mark here is 96. So what you're gonna to want to do is you're gonna to need to test all the classes here and calculate what is the maximum value at three standard deviations and the highest value there will tell you which class would have received the highest mark. Okay, and then the lowest mark is just the opposite. So instead of adding, we're going to subtract so you're going to subtract 3 times 5 for the first one, and that gives us 63. That means nobody, essentially nobody, virtually 100% of all the, the people in this class got at, at 63 or better. That is going to be the lowest, the lowest possible mark. So you're going to want to do that for B, okay, which is going to be um, 78, oh, 75 minus... 3 times 7, okay, so that's 75 minus 21, that should give us around 54, okay, and then so on. So you're going to keep going, okay, for each of those classes, and then the one with the lowest score is going to be the class that would have the lowest mark, and you can be almost 100% sure of that. Okay, and then C and D says, which has the largest range of scores, okay, and then so the largest range is we're looking for the highest, highest value. Uh, the highest, uh, the largest range of scores. It's actually, like, it's actually a measure of dis what's called dispersion. So this is the highest uh, dispersion of scores. Okay, so how does the data s spread out? So the way we need to look at this is that the standard deviation that is the highest is going to have the greatest range or variability in scores. Okay, so in this case, if we look at this, it's going to be class C because um, the standard deviation of sigma is equal to 10. Okay, and then the lowest range is just going to be the opposite. It's going to be the lowest range or the lowest dispersion. Okay, so the lowest dispersion is equal to the value of the class where we have the lowest standard deviation. So in this case, it's class A. Okay, because sigma in this case here is five, I believe, from there, yeah, it's five. So that means that all the data points are very, very close together as compared to class C. 
Okay, so this is how you want to go approach uh, a question like this. Um, it's just understanding what the terms standard deviation and mean are and what they actually reflect in terms of um, where things are either on the standard deviation or in the, sort of the normal distribution curve. Okay, and then interpreting what standard deviation actually means. Okay, so higher number means the numbers are you can have small numbers and big numbers and there's a big big range of values in between and a low standard deviation means that all those numbers tend to be very very close to the mean itself okay